Hello people of the world and I am going to continue my Unity 3D tutorial series. Right now we have a first person controller prefab in our game and we can walk around, jump and look around just like a first person shooter game. Um, I'm just going to explain what a prefab is. What a prefab is, you can make your own prefab by going on the project panel going create prefab. And what they are um, the first person controller is a prefab and it's an object or a, an, an item that consists of other stuff so this pre you can tell that it's a prefab we haven't changed it by, by um, the fact that it's blue the, the color and it consists of yeah different stuff um, so the first person controller consists of a camera which we saw in the earlier tutorial if you haven't seen that go and watch that because it just um, tells you how to start up and shows you how to get this. And um, yeah, the main camera is the camera you see, and it has the mouse look script attached to it. The graphics is um, what you see, what is the actual person, although you don't actually see it in the um, when you're actually playing because it's a first person game. Um, if you put it into third person, you would see it. So, for example, if I did that. It would now be a third person game, um, but still using the mouse look script. Oh, I fell off. But I'm gonna just position that back where it was. Um, um, and as you can see, the point light isn't a prefab, but let's say we wanted to make a prefab out of the point light. Um, so, well, actually, there wouldn't be much point doing that, but. Um, if we wanted to make a prefab, it would, there's no point, but uh, you go to create prefab, it would create a new prefab here, you can rename that to light, what invented name, and then just drag the point light onto it, and there's you can see the cube becomes blue, that means you've now made a prefab, and actually it saves the range and stuff, so if we wanted to bring another one in, we can just bring it in, we've got now got another one that's got exactly the same settings which is really useful and as you can see the um, point light has turned blue which means that it is now a prefab. But anyway, carrying on with the tutorial we are going to add some physics to our game. Um, so let's create a cube, another cube, position it into play and now I want this cube to just fall to the ground but act like a crate or something. So let's ro rotate it with the rotate tool up here so it's just hovering above the, uh, above the ground but now, when we play, you see the cube just hangs in the air. It's got no physics attached to it. It doesn't use gravity. So what we're going to do is go to Component, Physics, and add a rigid body to the cube. And as you can see, it's added it here. Now you can adjust all the settings like angular drag, mass, and everything. Um, and use gravity is what we want as well. So now when we play, you can see the cube falls to the ground, might be a bit laggy, but the cube falls to the ground and it acted like a cube would. And you can also, with the box collider that the cube comes with, um, you can also add the uh, box collider by going to physics box collider. Um, you can change it, change the physics material, so let's change it to bouncy by clicking on this and selecting bouncy. And let's see what happens. Yeah, as you can see, it's now bouncing around our scene. And, oh, it's gone. <laughs> okay, so um, that's a simple tutorial on how to um, put physics into your game. Um, now I'm going to show you how to rename objects. I, um, it's quite easy to rename objects. It's just up here. So this, this is the, um, let's call it the physics cube. Or just box that bounces. Okay, so now you can see it's renamed to Box the Bounces. And this is the floor, so it just keeps it a lot more organised so you don't accidentally do something wrong and you meant with Box the Bounces and you meant to use the floor. So it's quite useful doing that. Um, oh, yes, and another thing with prefabs if you, you, you notice that the main camera follows what well, is these two kind of follow the first person controller and then what the first person controller is is an empty game object 
with these two inside it. Um, and it, it follows it, it's like a, it's a child of that object. So if I wanted the point light to always follow the first person controller, I could drag, uh, it'll say lose prefab, which means we're changing the prefab, but that's okay. So now we've added the point light into it. And let's, um, let's it so we can actually see this happening. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, range, I'll just set to, oh no, five, well, three, four. Okay, so now we can, um, now when we play the game, you see the point light follows us. It might be easier to um, see if we untick the uh, maximize on play. And now we can see in our game the point light follows us, which is really good. We can jump up and down, and it follows us wherever. And this is really useful, and it, it, it creates a good effect actually, making a light follow you. Yep. And the box has already bounced off the screen. Um, got a little bit of time left. Uh, so let's quickly. Um, let's add some colour. Show you some materials. I'll just um, reset this point light so that it doesn't follow. Range to 20. Ooh, very light now. Okay. Now let's add some colour to our object. To do that, you need to go to create material. You create a new material, and then you can add a texture, a 2D texture to it that you've created in paint or something. But what we're going to do now is just click on this and choose the color manually. Just, just I think I just choose a block color, red. That's good, and I'll just rename it to red. So now, if you wanted the floor to be red, we can just drag this red. Um, material onto it and now the floor is a very nice red and it looks really good because of the shading around the edges because of the light and there goes the cube <laughs> um, yeah so it's very simple to add materials and I think I'm going to add a blue to the cube so let's name this blue and go onto this Pick a nice blue colour, I'm sure you know how to do that. Um, and just add it to the box that bounces. Now we have a nice contrast of colours here in our scene. Bouncing away. <laughs> and let's knock it off the edge. Oh no, we fell off as well. Okay. So um, that concludes the second tutorial. And don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And see you next time.